We're back. Today we're talking about D loads. Are they overrated? Do you need them? How do you use them? How do you utilize them? When, why, how, whatever it might be. Be sure to subscribe, give this thing a thumbs up. We're back in action. I think the term deload is bad because they're overrated because everyone's always, anytime weights get heavy or they don't feel their strongest or they don't move how they want or they're not adding weight to the bar, they automatically think they need to deload or their recovery's off. Then they buy a $300 massage gun that's absolutely useless and continue to spin their wheels. Part of training, and I talked about this in the last video, is that we want to be able to adapt to the stimulus. We don't necessarily want to recover. Right? We're not trying to represent our strength every day in the gym. We're trying to build strength in the gym. You want to represent or show the strength, display your strength at a competition or when we're testing for a one rep max or if you play a sport on Sunday if you're a football player, etc. So the fact that weights don't move perfectly or you're not adding weight every single week in the gym is actually super normal. It's not an emergency sign to slam the button and hit a deload. Uh, we can still get better, we can still focus on uh, other aspects, whether it be hypertrophy, whether it be uh, skill acquisition, getting better at the lift itself. We can work on um, our foot placement, our hand placement, our tightness, etc. Now how do I like to use deloads or lighter weeks? Now I, I maybe cut the volume by 30 to 50% on my main lifts, maybe not my accessories if we're in a training block, um, and I maybe take the intensity down 5-10%. Um, but the big recoverability there, or the deload there, is the volume. Uh, if I'm used to handling a top set on squats of a single, uh, anywhere from one to three, at like an RP eight or nine, maybe a seven, and then we're doing a bunch of back offs, three, five, six sets of back offs, I'll just cut those back offs away, and my top set, instead of being a nine, might be a seven or an eight, a seven and a half. Even taking a 0.5 off the RPE on the top set and cutting that volume by, you know, one third um, will allow you to recover, allow you to take a mental and physical break from training. Your training session will be cut in half time-wise. You won't be sitting at the barbell squatting for six to 10 sets or whatever it might be. And obviously these are all very general, but I'm just throwing out numbers out there so you can get an idea. And the other factor is that some people may not need to do that at all. Um, the whole goal of RPE in a lot of senses is that you can predict or feel how you're training within that day or hopefully predict on the load you're, or the set you're about to do next and hopefully we can ride that wave the entire time. If we have a four week cycle and we're slowly adding volume but our top set is always RPE 7 or 8 and our, even our down sets are 7 or 8 with sets of 5 or 6, if we need a deload naturally, hopefully, if you're an experienced athlete and you're decent with RPE, you'll know by the time you're loading up the bar that you just can't go as heavy that day. My, uh, my down sets, I'll be able to lighten the load also. And again, that will naturally be a lighter week just because maybe I pushed too much the week before or the month before. Um, again, hopefully you have a coach, hopefully you have a program uh, that allows you to guide through these things. I've said it many times. My analogy is that uh, just because we all drive cars, and we need a basic understanding of cars, I think that's a good idea to know what an engine, a transmission, a wheels, brakes, etc. Doesn't mean we all need to be mechanics. Um, but in training, for some reason, everyone wants to know all these semantics and details about training and programming, yet you can be the best lifter in the world and not have a clue what's going on. Michael Jordan was the best player in the world, and who knows, his, his basketball IQ could be high, but handling a team uh, uh, situation, he could have no knowledge of it, because you don't need to. You, you need to know the basics and then you need to be able to follow the directions to get stronger, get faster. And I understand the thirst for knowledge, wanting to do things optimally. Trust me, I understand. That's how I got to where I am. I started training and I want to be, you know, I didn't want to waste my time or spin my wheels in the gym. So I started hunting down information, coaches that I could learn from. And luckily, uh, I got to learn from the best over the time. But hopefully that gives you an idea of deloads. I actually don't even know what the heck the argument is on TikTok. I just saw there's an argument called gym talk, hashtag. Hashtag fit talk. Let me know in the comments below what that argument is and maybe I'll rebuttal on TikTok or another video here. Appreciate you. New video every Tuesday. Thanks so much. 3sb.co, all the gear. If you guys want to check it out, support me, support the gym, and also look fly with some high quality merch. Appreciate you. Catch you next time.